Hi everyone, it's Matt, back for week three of 52 weeks of standard decks. And this time I'm taking a Soltai Ramp deck into the standard event. This is one of the 10 and 1 deck lists from the Mythic Qualifier this past weekend. I really like uh, how it's set up. It has a ton of built-in card advantage and a lot of recursion with escape creatures like Uro and even one Pelucranos. Um, and then my favorite part is that it plays a full four copies of Casualties of War. Three in the main deck, one in the sideboard for maximum blowing up of your opponent's stuff. So I've gotten a few rounds in to warm up with this deck and it's been super fun. So let's take it to the standard event. All right, and one thing I've found with this deck is oftentimes if you are playing a more aggressive deck, you have to use your life total as a resource in the beginning so you can get up to enough mana to really turn the corner. If you trade one for one with their creatures and don't play things like Growth Spiral or Uro to ramp you to your big stuff, you may end up just being too slow to actually um, turn the corner on them. So. We'll see if that comes up in any of our matches here. All right, and this is well set up for absolutely anything. I really like this opener, so it's a keep. Notably, this um, Soltai Ramp deck does not play any Arboreal Grazers, and I actually really liked that. I was unsure if that was a card that should be included or not. But in addition to making your land count a little bit less constrained, it seems to me, and here, I actually don't think we need Atris right now. Uh, it seems to me like it's often just a really bad top deck, and unless you have a ton of lands in your opener, the benefits are really short-lived. So I bottomed Atris mostly because I really want to keep hitting land drops. And we already have a lot of really good action in hand, including Tamiyo for card advantage. Not entirely. Oh, well, we bought him Datris, but we found another copy of it. And here, definitely going to look to Growth Spiral. Uh, we're not under any pressure right now, and I'd like to get up to four mana if possible to play a Tamiyo or an Atris. Okay, so it looks like we're up against a Jund Sacrifice deck. Go ahead and scry here. We are just full of Atrises. We'll put that one on the bottom as well. Atris is legendary, so slightly worse in multiples, although obviously there's a lot of built-in card advantage with that card. Okay. And here, we have a few interesting options. We can... Tyrant Scorn plus Thought Erasure, or we can Atris or Tamiyo. I think I want to find out what they have going on over there, so let's Tyrant Scorn to get rid of the Midnight Reaper. And then we'll hopefully take their most impactful card here. All right, a couple Mayhem Devils and another Midnight Reaper, but not a lot of other synergies. So Mayhem Devil is really scary when they have their thing going. I think I want to keep them off additional cards for right now, though. And I do want to continue hitting land drops. And then my idea is if they do find a way to get the cat oven going with a mayhem devil it should take a couple turns at least and we'll have at least massacre girl to clean that up and then here one potential play is actually to play tamio get back tyrant scorn seems better to play atris though And I always like when they have to think for a little while on Atris. It usually means that there's some pretty good cards in there. If it was just three lands, the split becomes a lot easier. 
Okay, Nissa and two other cards. Very interesting. Nissa is very, very powerful. Hmm. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I'm tempted to take the two cards for some reason. I feel like they might be quite good. I'm going to go ahead and take the sure thing in the Nissa though. Alright, and they were just two lands, so definitely the right choice there. Okay, so if they play Mayhem Devil and then... Okay, there is the Cat for the Cat Oven combo. And now we're probably going to see Mayhem Devil plus Sacrifice. Hmm... Alright, this seems like a mistake from our opponent, as they could have killed our Atris if they had played out the other Mayhem Devil first. So unless they have a very good 4-drop here, even still, I'm not sure why they would have played out the Cat first, so I think this is just a mistake. And hopefully we're able to capitalize on it. And so here, instead of playing Nyssa, I think I'm going to go ahead and play out the Masker Girl to clear the board. And this should leave our opponent um, without too much going on. And with the Planeswalkers and Hydroid Krasis, we should be in pretty good shape now. So they have something to do in response. Maybe a uh, murderous rider, but I don't think that actually helps them. Um, no, it will not help them. <laughs> yeah, I think the way this works is that ability is already on the stack, so it should keep going. Yeah, there we go. Had a feeling that's what our opponent was considering. Alright, and now we can really start Establishing dominance with Nissa Hydroid Crisis shenanigans. And then here, how's the auto tapper doing? Oh, it's actually tapping pretty well right now. Often it won't tap the temples for some reason and it shorts you on mana with Nissa. I can go ahead and play out Tamio here as well. And do we want to get something back or just plus? I think I'm just going to plus. Looking for... Probably a Casualties of War makes the most sense. There we go, right off the top. So Corvold generally is the scariest card that can come out of this deck. Um, even so, with Casualties of War in hand and the Planeswalkers on the battlefield, Corvold would not be that big of a deal, I don't think. Alright, so our opponent did find a way to deal with Nyssa. And they should definitely attack down Tamio, so that if we are going to get something back, we will at least lose Tamio. And then we have an interesting choice next turn between Casualties of War to get rid of Mayhem Devil in a land, or just playing a reasonably large Hydroid Krasis. We'll see what we draw. Well, the Legion's End to get rid of our Animated Island. Very interesting. Okay. So 
we can only play a 4-4 four, four Krasis this turn. No, a 5-5. Five, five. I'm tempted to try to hold off a turn and see if we can get a slightly larger Krasis going. Let's go ahead and get rid of a land and the Mayhem Devil. And we'll take them off of red mana here. And I probably should have done this looking for Nissa before I did Casualties of War. But I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference at this point in the game. And because I don't have a lot of um, Forest out, I don't believe I would have been able to cast both spells anyway. Alright, so that'll do it for game one. What do we want to bring in in game two? Well, I like to start thinking about what I want to take out first. And I definitely think Thought Erasure is less effective against these low to the ground decks. So I'm going to cut at least a couple of Thought Erasures. Sometimes I also like to trim on the Hydroid Krasis. Um, usually you don't need all four copies in the quicker matches. So I want to bring in the Rituals of Soot, as those seem incredibly strong. I also want to bring in another Masker Girl. And then I'm considering bringing in the four Lovestruck Beasts as a way to really slow them down. They won't be able to attack through any of those. Uh, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to cut two more Thought Erasures. And, hmm... Probably two of the Hydroid Crazy. Oh, okay. Never mind. Our opponent has seen enough, it, occur it seems. So we get the first match victory in round one. Kind of a weird one. Uh, if you enjoyed that game, please consider a like or subscribe below. And I will see you for round two. Thanks. Bye.